Welcome to the I Can Do That podcast. I'm Jem Fadling, spiritual formation coach, author, and founding partner of Unhurried Living. With 30 years experience in spiritual formation, I help people grow by combining grounded optimism with practical spirituality. This effective dynamic will guide you onto the path of discernment so that you can transform your hopes into habits. Each episode, I'll share one practical idea with one simple takeaway. Together, we'll grow at the pace of transformation and you'll move into your day saying to yourself, I can do that. Many years ago, when I was in the toughest part of my counseling experience, an image emerged in my imagination that perfectly illustrated the difficult dynamic I felt. So picture a dark room, and at the center is a banquet table with a black tablecloth on it. On the table are scattered items that represent the various memories and stories from your past. Each week in a one-hour session, my counselor and I would pick up one of the memories look at it, take it apart, put it back together in the most profound way, and then set it back down. Sometimes, however, the taking apart and putting back together did not fit into one hour. With the session over, I was left holding the open memory with these words floating in my mind, but what do I do with this? Now, my counselor was very skilled. In fact, he was known to his colleagues as the Velvet Knife. And he definitely lived up to that moniker. Each week, he would do his best to leave me in such a state that I could continue to function in my life. And I did function, even when I was undone. Those of you who have experienced this kind of counseling or any other type of deep healing process know what I'm talking about. You're in the process of healing, and sometimes you have to hang out for a bit while the loose ends aren't tied up. Well, many years later, I was listening to someone share about an ongoing, unfinished work of healing in their life, and another image flashed in my mind. This time, it was a little more graphic than a banquet table. This image was that of an operating room. Now, normally, a surgeon opens up the patient in order to take out the diseased organ and then neatly sews up the wound. But sometimes, in the surgery of inner healing, The person is emotionally cut open, stem to stern, and the master physician is doing the work of removing, repairing, and healing. Unfortunately, when doing emotion and soul work, you sometimes need to get up off the table, cut open, and attend to your regular life. At least that's what it can feel like. Inner healing usually takes longer than a quick surgery to remove your appendix. Now, I share these two images with you because I want you to know that if you are in an ongoing healing process, I respect that and I hold that with you. You are in sacred space. As always, there is no need to rush your ongoing feelings of inner pain and even unrest are to be expected. It is human to feel the distress of the transformational process. It means you're not in denial, and this is good news. So let yourself be held in this sacred space. Yes, we expect the grace of God to bring you to complete healing, but we don't ever know the timing. So as we wait, it's good to remember that at some point you will have made it through. And we hold on to this hope in the fullest sense of the word while we wait for healing to occur. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. So, if you are in a place of ongoing inner healing right now, here's a few questions. How might you honor and respect where you are? What does it look like for you in the season? What are some ways your faith roots can sink even deeper into God in the midst? And if you are walking alongside someone else who is in a place of ongoing inner healing, here are a few more questions. How might you honor and respect where they are? 
How might Hebrews 11.1 1 inform how you pray for them? How might you be listening with a non-fixing ear as they process their not-yet state? Well, here's your I can do that for this week. If you feel as though you are walking around half done, it's okay. Hold yourself in this place with patience and grace. It's okay to take your foot off the gas pedal and apply it to the brake. Healing will come at the pace of transformation. And remember, you are making your way forward one small, simple, and gracious step at a time. If you'd like to connect with me and Unhurried Living further, I invite you to sign up for Unhurried Daily. For 40 days, we'll send you a brief daily email that will serve as a touch point for an unhurried inner pace. It's just a few sentences with a practical question, prayer, or tip. Sign up on our website at unhurriedliving.com. If you love what you just heard, please follow, rate, and review this podcast. This helps more people find us, and I really appreciate your help. You can also text this episode to a friend so they can join you on this journey. Together, let's move at the pace of grace and grow at the pace of transformation. Transformation.